Hello there, and welcome to the presentation for statistics about sample survey. Let's get started learning about this. So first of all, let's review a little bit of the history of where we're at. We began this uh, course by talking about data, and you should remember the kinds of data, such as uh, qualitative and quantitative, discrete and continuous. We first looked at data as far as seeing it in a graphical display and charts like stem and leaf, bar chart, Pareto chart, and histogram and others. Then we talked about summarizing data using numbers such as mean, median, and mode standard deviation, IQR, and range. We then talked about data, finding about the position of the data, such as z-score and percentile. And finally, we talked about seeing relationships in data, such as with a scatter plot or with chi-squared. But where do data come from? One source of data is from sample surveys. A survey is where we ask questions to find out about a population. Remember that a population in statistics does not have to be people. We can have a population of books, trees, cars, buildings, rocks, dogs, cats, and so forth. But what is a sample? It's a subset. Remember subset from talking about sets? A subset of the population which should represent or show the characteristics of the whole population. The sample should reflect or show the characteristics of the whole population. So why should we sample? We could just check everyone in the population or all the individuals in the population. Well, there's some reasons why we don't to check the whole population. First, it's expensive. Imagine if you wanted to check all the people who lived in Bangkok that's roughly 13 million people and to have uh, a staff that would go out and talk to 13 million people would take a lot of time and a lot of money next it's not practical imagine you want to talk to all the people in Bangkok well the people are moving around they're at work Maybe they're in the hospital, maybe they're on vacation in another country, uh, maybe you uh, cannot find them. Okay, so it's not practical to talk to everybody, it's not really possible. And finally, there's a problem about accuracy and having errors. Well, let's say, you know, it's going to take a lot of time to talk to everyone in Bangkok. You might ask, person, uh, the first person, and then maybe they'll move somewhere else in the city, and then you'll ask them again, so then you'll have counted them twice. So it would introduce an error, or it would create errors. So these are three reasons. Expensive in time and money, it's not practical, and it's cr prone to having errors, or tends to have errors. Next, we should talk about bias, bias in the sample. So bias sample means it does not show the population characteristics accurately, or part of the population may be counted too much, or part of the population may be counted too little. So the population characteristics might be overrepresented or underrepresented in the sample. All of these are kinds of bias which is bad and we don't want bias. Now there's some sample key ideas we should talk about. There's three sample key ideas 
And we should think all about noodles, like making a pot of noodles. This will help us understand it. First point, we check a part of the whole. When you're making a pot of noodles, you need to check the flavor. Do you eat the whole pot to know if it tastes good? No, of course not. You just take a small spoonful out of the pot and taste it, and that way you know if the whole pot is good or not. This is a sample, a one spoonful out of the whole pot. The second key idea, it's about random. If you add some num plat to the pot and then quickly taste the pot, you'll think the noodles are too salty if you taste from the top where the num plat still is, or you might think there's not enough salt and add more num plat if you happen to take a spoonful from the bottom before the num plat has mixed in. So you have to stir the pot before you taste it so you get an accurate flavor of the whole pot. This is what random is about stirring the pot. <clears throat> Remember, random kills bias. The third key idea is it's about the sample size, not the population size. This is a little bit hard to understand. But, for example, if you make your pot of noodles for a larger group of people, you need a larger pot because you need to make more noodles. But when you want to test the flavor, do you need a bigger spoon because it's a bigger pot just to taste it? No, of course not. So the same is true about taking a survey. You need a good sample size, but the sample size is not related or not connected to the population size. So, how do we get a sample from the population? There are four main ways, and they're all about cake. But before we get to the cake, we need to learn some vocabulary. First, a frame. A frame is a list of all members of the population, all individuals of a population. Number two, homogenous. Homogenous here means the same or very similar, consistent throughout or uniform throughout. And number three, a valid sampling method. A sample is a subset of the population, and a valid sampling method makes that each possible subset is equally likely to happen. The first sampling method is simple random sample, or simply abbreviated SRS. SRS is the most basic and most often used, and it's also part of all the other methods which we'll see in the next slides. Simple random sample needs a frame. It needs a list of all the individuals in a population. We use this method when the population is mostly homogeneous, is mostly the same among uh, different characteristics which are not critical to our understanding of the data. So the image, the cake image for this method, is a cake of only one flavor, for example chocolate. Pieces are chosen randomly from around the whole cake, and the set of chosen pieces is the sample. The second sampling method is stratified sampling. This also needs a frame. It's used when the population is made of different homogeneous groups, and the size of the groups is known. Groups mean strata, and strata is a section. So the image here is, we'll say we have a cake of three flavors, strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate. And we know that strawberry is 40% of the cake, maybe vanilla is 50%, and the last part, chocolate, is only 10%. So the sample is made or chosen following these percentages. And SRS is used to pull from those cake layers. For example, when you make your sample, 
you would expect 40% of the individuals in the sample to be from the strawberry layer, 50% from the vanilla layer, and 10% from the chocolate layer. In that way, the sample has the same percentages or ratio as the population as a whole. The third sampling method is cluster sampling. This also needs a frame. This is used when the population is made of different homogeneous groups, but the size of the groups is not known. So this is similar to stratified sampling, but the difference is that we don't know the group sizes. The image here for the cake is a cake of multiple flavors, but the amount of each flavor is not known. So we go around the cake and divide it into slices. Then we use simple random sampling to choose when one of the slices. Then all the individuals in that chosen slice are checked. The fourth sampling method is systematic sampling. This does not need a frame. This is the only one that does not need a frame. We use this when the population maybe passes us by, such as cars going by on a road, or customers leaving a store, or maybe fish swimming in a river. The image for cake here is cakes coming out of a factory. SRS is used to decide which cake to begin with. Then after that, we're going to check every nth cake, like every seventh cake, as it passes by. Now there are some bad slapping methods, which we do not want to do. Bad methods means you're creating bias. Two of them. One, voluntary response sample. The key idea is individuals choose themselves to be part of the sample. You can see this when you see a sample, uh, a survey on the internet and you click here and answer some questions or people calling into a radio or TV show to respond to a question. Um, another way that voluntary response sample happens is by asking a question or doing something such that only people with a strong opinion would take the time to answer. All of these create bias of a voluntary response sample type. The second way is convenience sample. The key idea for this one is people are chosen through some easy way such that they are biased. For example, the people taking the survey ask their friends and family or just ask only the people at their company or school. For example, maybe someone stands outside the 7-Eleven and asks people where they like to shop. Well, obviously, a lot of people going in and out of the store are going to pass by, and they're going to get their opinion about where to shop, and they're probably going to say 7-Eleven. Or you go to a park and ask, how often do you use parks? Well, the people who are in a, inside the park probably go to the park more often than the population as a whole. Or standing at a bus stop or outside a SkyTrain station to ask if the government should spend more money on public transport. Well, the people at those places are more likely to say yes, that more money should be spent on public transport. But that's different than the population as a whole. People who have cars or motorcycles probably use public transportation less. Another way is maybe using a list of customers from a company such as a list of phone numbers from a mobile company and then you call those phone numbers and ask which mobile company they prefer well probably the results of that survey are going to break down a percentage as to how many people you called from each company for example if your list had fifty percent of the people from AIS and thirty percent from True and 20% from DTAC, probably which company they prefer will follow those percentages, with 50% of the people more or less saying AIS and 20% saying DTAC. So these are the two bad methods. So in conclusion, be sure you know the following. What a sample is, its definition, why sampling is important, 
what bias is in its definition, what is needed for a valid sampling method, the three key ideas of sampling about the soup and noodles, the four methods of sampling and their cake images, and the two bad methods of sampling. Okay, thanks very much. That's all. Bye-bye.